Hello, I'm back. Okay, so let's look at the next question, the next page. It says, Tania drew the models below to represent four different decimal numbers. Which list shows these decimal numbers in order from least to greatest? Well, just looking at the size of each one, you can see kind of what the smallest amount is. This one is a small amount. Oh, oh, this one's even smaller. Look, those have two. This one has that. And that one has like three. And that one has like three longs and a little bit more. So just before you even read the question, I can kind of see that this one's the smallest. And then this one's a little bit bigger. And then that one's a little bit bigger because it's three. And then this one is like three longs and three units. And so let's write the decimal for each of those. This is, if you count the units, it's 10 plus nine. So 19 out of 100. So 19 one hundredths. This one is two longs out of 10. The fractional amount is two out of 10. So it's two tenths, two tenths. So look, that's 19 one hundredths and that's two tenths. And then this one is three out of 10. So it's three tenths. And you should, when you have a problem like this, you should write all over it showing your work. This is 33 out of 100, so it's 33 one hundredths. And we know that when we're comparing decimal amounts, we kind of want to make sure they all have the same number of digits so that we can really compare them. So we know that 3 tenths is the same as 30 one hundredths because you can always add a zero. And we know that 2 tenths is the same as 20 one hundredths because you can always add a zero. And so then it's easier to see that it would go 19. From, from least to greatest, it would go 19, 20, 30. 33. But then when it lists them out, it's only going to put 0.2 and 0.3. So you just have to think 19 is first. So that eliminates it down to either this answer choice or this answer choice. And then 20 or 0.2, 2 tenths or 21 hundredths. So 0.2 is next. We still have these two answer choices are okay. And then this one, 19, 20, 30. So 0.3 is next. So this one is eliminated. Put a line through that. Remember, when we eliminate answer choices, we can just mix them out. We already eliminated those two, these ones, because we didn't start with the smallest number. And so that leaves this one. And so it went in order from least to greatest. Mr. Nimoy is going to construct a brick patio in his backyard. He has enough bricks to construct a patio that has a total area of 120 square feet. If the shape of the patio is a rectangle and the area of the patio is exactly 120 feet, which could be the dimensions of the completed patio. When it says which could be the dimensions of the completed patio, we need to look at length times width. Our formula for area equals length times width. If it asks for perimeter, the area, the length around the outside 
It's side plus side plus side plus side. But if it's area, the length, the measurement of the area inside, that means you are finding measurements of one side by one side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four columns. Four rows. Four times four is 16. And if you count all of these, it's 16. So that is how you find the area because you're counting everything inside too. And when you're finding perimeter of the same square, you know that on a square or a rectangle, this could be a rectangle, pretend like it is a rectangle. A rectangle means one side is longer than the other side. In that case, you would add eight plus four plus eight plus four to find the perimeter. And that would be 12 plus 12 is 24. So if we were finding the area of the same square, it would be eight times four is 32. So it's completely different numbers for perimeter and area. And so your perimeter is side plus side plus side plus side and area is length times width. And so since it says that this one is equal up to 120 square feet, you need to check all of these and see which one is a hundred adds up to 120 when you multiply them. So is 40 times 20 120? Is 12 times 10 120? Is 50 times 10 120? Is 14 times 12, 120. Mm -hmm. The only way to do is to check. Well, when you're, when you're multiplying numbers that have zeros on them, the trick is just to, num to multiply the two numbers, four times two, and then add on the zeros. 800, that's not 120. So we know this one cannot be the right answer. What about 12 times 10? Hmm. Again, you just multiply the numbers. 12 times 1 is 12. And then you add on the 0. Ding, 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 ding. That one comes to 120. So I'm going to put a star by it because I'm like, wow, I think that's the answer. But let's check the other ones. 5 times 50 times 10. 5 times 1 equals 5. And the two zeros, 500. Nope. What about 14 times 12? Well, there's we can't use our trick for that one. So we just have to do 14 times 12. Got your equation. Four times two is eight. Two times one is two. Put in your placeholder, because now we're doing this one and that one. One times four is four. One times one is one. Got them together. You add this row to that number row, and you get 168. That's not the answer. So the one where we did 12 times 10 is 120. That's the answer. 120. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at the next page. This one says, 
says, Nico had a number of crowns. Leah has five times as many crowns as Nico. Together, they have 48 crowns. Which diagram best represents the situation where N is the number of crowns that Nico has? So what you kind of need to do is see which one of these add up to 48 because it says that 48 crowns in all. So which ones of these adds up to 48? This one, the first answer, there's no way of knowing. This is like a big old blank N plus eight equals 48. Hmm, that's just a big old question mark. Whoa. What about this one? Five plus five plus five plus five plus five is, well, multiplication is repeated addition. And we're repeating five plus five plus five plus five plus five. So that's five times one, two, three, four, five. So five times five is 25. So this part is 25. And then this part is the exact same length as that part. So this is also five. And so is 25 plus this five 48? No, 25 plus five is 30, not 48. Hmm, nope, that's not it. We can go back, let's go back and check this one because this one's like star, this one comes out, right? But look at this one, eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. Okay, that's repeated addition. So eight times four is 32. Plus this eight more. So 32 plus eight. Two plus eight is 10, 40. So that does not match. Nope. So we're eliminating this answer choice. Well, what about that one that we were just like question mark? Even that one is like, hmm, they're not, they're telling you that this is eight. So you can kind of gauge it. Kind of matches this one though. Like this one just, this doesn't make sense. You don't have numbers to really add. This one, eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. It's repeated addition. Eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. So that is eight times five equals 40. Plus this one is the same length as that one. So 40 plus eight equals 48, ding, ding, ding the right answer choice. Okay. It matches what it said. Nika has a number of crowns. There's Nika. Leah has five times as many as Nika. So there's Nika in for Nika. And then there is uh, Leah. Here's Leah's crowns. She has five times as many. She has eight. She has five times as many as her. 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. And then together they have 48. So this equi this diagram totally matches what this is saying. Which diagram best represents the situation where N is the number of crowns that Nika has. Let's look at this one. Angles M and N equal 180 degrees combined. This looks like a straight angle vertex is right here and we always know that a straight angle 
is 180 degrees, the measurement all the way from this side to that side for a straight angle is 180 degrees. This is two angles put together. They're adjacent to each other. N, it looks like an acute angle. And M is an obtuse angle because a 90 degree angle was straight up and down and N is smaller than that. And M is bigger, it's obtuse. And so the measurement here and the measurement here, if angle M is 135, you wanna write 135 right in there. This one is 135. What is this one if the whole thing is 180? And remember, when they tell you the whole amount combined, when the M and N is 180 combined, Two parts equal the whole. One side is, we're visualizing right now, 135. What is the missing part? That's a subtraction problem. And these two numbers combined equal that number. So we do 180 minus 135. What's 180 minus 135? Write the equation and then do the equation and make sure you regroup. You can't do 0 minus 5, and so you regroup. 10 minus 5 is 5, 7 minus 3 is 4, 1 minus 1 is nothing, so the answer is just 45. So remember, we gotta check our work. So for subtraction, you do the opposite and you add to see if you get the big number. 1, 35 plus 45. Line up the decimal points. 5 plus 5 is 10. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 4 is 8. 180. Check and check. So 45 is your answer. Let's look at the next one. Looks like there's two more on this page. better in my video actually. I don't want it to be too long.